I want to share with you today about my very first panel discussion that uh, was broadcasted live on LinkedIn and four things that have helped me to ease my struggles around um, being visible as an introvert. Welcome to the Productive Introvert Community Podcast, helping ambitious introverts who feel deep down that they can add more value to the world to really thrive in their work. I'm Mariela Franker, and I'll be sharing what I'm learning as an introverted entrepreneur, a natural productivity coach, and a mom while I build my business online and take care of my family and myself. In this podcast, you'll learn the mindset and the practical steps to naturally increase the impact of your work while making space for your unique strengths as an introvert. Hi, it's Mariella. The lighting is pretty bad, I think. <laughs> but let's just roll with it. So yesterday was my very first panel discussion. The first time that I was a member of a panel. It was organized by Introvert You, uh, and there were three speakers, plus our host, Fifi. And it was a good experience. I am actually quite pleased and surprised with how well it all went. There were some technical issues, most of them from my end. <laughs> but aside from that, it was really, really good. I'm not sure you can still see the panel discussion i'm not sure um but i'll put the link in i think they're still there for a, a week or two i'm not sure when they will take it down uh, but i'll put the link in the description just in case um, you're seeing this within a few days and you're interested in that i'm taking a bit of a slow start today because whenever i have this type of activity something like um, this panel it can take a lot out of you, right? I noticed this morning that I was still processing um, and I, I noticed my energy level is then a little bit, not low per se, but you're processing. So you, you just need a little bit of time to decompress. I think that's kind of the, the best word to describe it, to decompress from all that stimulation and, and all this new stuff that happened yesterday. <clears throat> I also got, on a personal level, I got some, some bad news. So it was quite an intense day yesterday. And I think it's important to, to acknowledge that. And especially as an introvert, to give yourself permission to take that time to decompress. So for me, I'm, I'm, having a bit of a slow start this morning. Uh, we got our, our son ready for school. Oh, school. <laughs> he's not going to school yet. Soon, soon. Uh, this year, but it feels like he's already there because he's been talking about it for months on end. But we got him ready for daycare. And my husband's off um, to his, um, his uh, work outside of the house. Um, and after that, I just thought, you know, I'm just going to have a slow start made myself a cup of coffee. And I would be recording in my little office cabin um, right now, usually, and thought, you know, I'll just do it inside. I'll do it right here at my dining table. About the panel, it was a really good experience. Um, the organizers were so gracious and the other panelists, so knowledgeable and so open. It was a really, really, nice and open conversation, which is the type of conversation that I love. I think the most difficult thing for me personally, and I'm not sure if, if you recognize this, I know other introverts have it, but of course it's not true for everyone. Um, but that's kind of switching between talking to different people, you know, in a group setting like this. And, um, and kind of keeping in mind, okay, how can I contribute to this conversation in the best way that it also helps the other person? So that was, for me, the biggest challenge between, um, you know, responding to the hostess, uh, her questions, and engaging with the conversation of um, what other panelists are saying, 
And then thinking about the audience, because it was live on, on LinkedIn, and people were watching and um, putting in some questions. Oh, I couldn't see that. The, the host was taking care of all of that, thankfully. And then um, afterwards, and then also today, there's still a lot of thoughts going on. Oh, you know, we talked about that, and oh, I should have said that, and oh, I could have said that, and then running through the conversation again in my head times. Um, and I think this is also a very typical thing of the decompression, right? Um, getting rid of all that stimuli. Um, the inner critic sometimes shows up when we do this. Um, it's this self-reflection process that we go through. So thinking about all this and about the podcast today, I decided that I wanted to share four things that that have helped me to kind of ease these struggles. You know, these struggles around visibility and putting yourself out there as an introvert, especially in the online world. I think these four things can be useful in any context where you're trying to um, be a bit more visible or put yourself out there a little bit, or if you, you, you feel that calling. But um, I apply it to online because, you know, I have an online business. And I did an episode before around when you struggle with visibility as an introvert, and this is kind of a continuation of that. So I'll put the link to that episode in the description as well. The first thing that has really helped me, or is helping me, because I'm still on this journey, right? I, I don't have it all figured out. I'm just sharing some of the things that I'm learning. The first thing is preparation really is key. We talked about this in the panel discussion yesterday too, and in the, uh, the Zoom that we had afterwards with a few members of Introvert U. Um, that, especially for introverts, preparation is very important because we go through this self-reflection process and we need time to formulate our thoughts and ideas. That's why a lot of us don't feel like we are quick to the punch or smooth talkers because, you know, it takes time, that internal processing and finding the words. So when you are stepping into a, maybe a new situation, an unknown situation, or there is already some kind of tension, for example, because visibility as an idea already causes tension, which is the case for me, um, and many people out there, not just introverts, but definitely a lot of people, then preparing can really, really give you something to hold on to, something to fall back on, and that can give a lot of peace of mind. But when I say preparation, I don't mean just content, right? Because um, a lot of the time, that's what we focus on. Like, what do I want to say? What's my main message? Um, like, you know, really about knowledge. And yes, it's important. But honestly, I find that that is, in terms of preparation, oftentimes not the most important thing. Because you're probably already an expert in what you do, okay? Even if you don't feel like that necessarily or you don't think of yourself as an expert, you know your subject. If you've been in business for a while or if it's something that naturally interests you, you know probably a lot more about it than other people do. And once you get into that space of, oh, I'm having this great conversation about something that interests me, it's very easy to draw from that and to talk about a subject for hours, right? If we get into that deep conversation and we have that connection. So honestly, I don't think in terms of preparation, that's the important thing to prepare. What I found that really helps in my preparation is around mindset. Things around expectations. What do I expect from this panel? What do I expect from myself in this panel? And I shared one of the questions that I always ask myself in my email uh, in the beginning of the week while I was preparing for this panel. <laughs> I learned from my mentor and it has completely changed the way that I step into situations. 
So the question that I ask is, when would I be satisfied with my effort? And the key word here is efforts, because we can't really control the results. Yes, I would love it if, you know, doing this panel discussion would, um, you know, get me more clients. I would love it if people would contact me, hey, I would be interested in a, in a coaching uh, program with you. But I can't control that, right? There are a lot of factors around that. And I can't control other people's actions. The only thing I can control is my own effort. So when would I be satisfied with my effort? That's one. Two is trust your gut. Okay, you make the rules around how you are visible, around how you show up for people. Because sometimes people say, oh, I don't feel comfortable sharing personal stories. I don't know how to be online and then, you know, talk about myself. That doesn't feel natural to me. Short answer is you don't have to. You make the rules. Um, so continuously checking in with yourself, how does this feel? Do I feel safe or does this feel really, really unsafe to me to show this part of myself and to take that seriously? I don't believe in constantly pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So yes, we need to stretch ourselves if we want to grow, right? But constantly pushing yourself out of your comfort zone in the long run, it's not a sustainable way to show up. It's not a sustainable way to work. I work with a lot of high achievers who are also introverts, and they're very prone to burnout. This is one of the reasons, because they're constantly pushing themselves out of their comfort zone and too far too fast. So take that seriously. Does this feel safe to me, yes or no? And if the answer is no, then take a few steps back. Ask yourself why, what is it that makes me feel unsafe? And then trust your gut. And then three, that ties in with, with this last one, is okay, what if I don't feel safe to talk about myself? I'm scrolling because I, I have my notes right here. Preparation is key, right? <laughs> So what if I don't feel safe to share things about myself? Like um, me, for example, I share quite a lot of things, uh, personal things about myself. That's not everyone's cup of tea, okay? Um, it really depends on your natural style. For me, this feels natural. I like to talk about struggles. I'm very open about that. I'm very honest about it. Um, and I always find a lesson. That's just my natural way of analyzing things, basically. Um, but for some people, that does not feel natural at all. And it may feel more natural for you to really talk about the content only and not about yourself, right? So number three is then sharing about the process rather than being the expert. And this is true, whatever natural style you have. Do not underestimate the power of sharing your process. So the way that I share my process is talking about the struggles and the things that I face on a daily basis. I'm not the expert in the sense that I know what's best for you. You know what's best for you in the end. Sometimes you need a little help to uncover it. You need a little bit of guidance to get you there. But in the end, you're the only person who knows what's best for you. So I just share my process of how I'm discovering that for myself. And maybe that can already help you take a few of those steps yourself. And if you want more support, we can work together one-on-one. -on -one. But so sharing your process. But if that's not... Um, the thing for you around personal experiences, but it's more around content, how can you do that around your content and around your expertise? So if you, for example, if you're an artist, um, rather than just showing the paintings a finished product and saying, hey, this is the painting, do you want it here? 
Can you make a time lapse of your art and share why you made certain choices? Um, I once saw an example of an editor uh, and she would write blogs about texts that she had edited and explain from the grammar rules and from a storytelling perspective why she made certain changes in that text. I was at a workshop with her and she shared she was totally uncomfortable um, sharing personal stories. That did not feel safe to her. She started writing a blog during COVID because she's also a mom and you know everything shifted from working from home and she started writing a blog about that and it's like, no, she deleted it. It doesn't mean that you're not willing to go the extra mile, right? It doesn't mean that there's something wrong for you not willing to show that part of yourself. It just doesn't match your natural style and that's okay. There are ways to work with your natural style and still have that connection with other people. And the way that she did her blog was very effective. She would share those blogs about how she was editing text and clients would find her based on that. So give yourself permission to feel safe when you are visible, when you choose to be visible. And then number four is baby steps. Build it up slowly. And I was talking with a friend um, about this the other day. He's a great writer and um, starting a new blog. And uh, he made a comment that he always finds it so fascinating that when someone puts their face like right next to <laughs> their, <laughs> their, their art, right? Because writing is also a form of art for me to podcast. You know, it's a, it's a form of expression. It's a form of creation. And creation to me is, is art. Um, and he, around his new blog, um, he's not comfortable doing that yet. And I just told him, it's, it looks like I just immediately did that because now I put the podcast also on LinkedIn and then my face is next to it, right? The same image that you see on Spotify, for example. But I didn't do that from the beginning. I've been building to this point for two years, building up very slowly. And I think the very first baby step for me was... Um, making a recording of my voice and listening back to it. This is actually how I do my daily reflections. And slowly I got used to my own voice. And that didn't feel like a big deal anymore. That started to feel safe. And then, uh, okay, what if I make like a tiny little mini video? The first video I put on LinkedIn, I think was over a year ago, was a one minute video of me I think I was just introducing myself. Um, and then I didn't post anything for weeks after that. But it was just testing the waters. So approach everything like a little experiment. So, you know, I'm just going to try this out. I'm going to try it for two days. I'm going to try it for a week. I'm going to try it for two weeks. And then I'm going to come back and see what happened and how I feel about it. And when you do this, don't focus on results, right? Because results take time to build. If I would say, oh, that one video, I want a thousand followers just based on that video. Or I want 10 clients based on that video. That is a very unrealistic expectation, putting a lot of pressure on the experiment. Rather than that, focus on effort and focus on how you feel about that experiment, what your inner critic does with that. So. Does this make me feel safe to take the next step? And if the answer is no, then it's okay. You just cruise there for a while or you take a step back and you can build it up slowly over time. This is what I think people mean when they say give yourself some grace in the sense that be very forgiving with yourself. And for me, it helps to look at it like a little experiment and just being curious about what happened. At the end of the panel, um, we were all asked, like, what would be your one technique that you can share for introverts to, to be more productive? And the technique that I shared is to get some kind of 
reflection practice in every day because this really, really makes a huge difference to not keep everything in your head because we do so much in our head uh, as introverts. We are compiling a lot of data <laughs> and there's more and more data around us to compile um, in the, the way that we live now. So a little bit of a practice that you can do to help you take some of those ideas out and build on them. It will help your natural process. So if you're interested in learning a little mini version of that, I have a free training bundle available. And you can go to my website, go.thefrankermessage.com slash free gift. And I'll leave the link to that in the description as well. This technique changed the way that I work completely. And it's really helped me personally to feel good about the decisions that I'm making for my business and to really get the most important things done every day. And it's, it's also helping some of my clients to get more clarity about what's important to them and to regain that focus. So if you're interested in that, it, you can find it in the description. Thank you so much for listening. And let's talk again next week. Thank you for listening to the Productive Introvert Community Podcast. If you're an introverted entrepreneur and you're ready to thrive in your own way, then connect with me on thefrankermessage.com slash contact.